teach constitutional law. If I gave that problem and got that answer, I'd give that answer an F. <laughs> there is nothing in any original reading of the Constitution that would lead you to that conclusion. That's a political decision designed to rig the game. We got enough game rigging in the economy already. We need to be able to share our citizenship. It may not be so popular, but it's Hillary's life and her campaign, and I believe it with all my heart. You've got to know how to stand your ground. But in our country, under our Constitution, and given the realities of who's running the Congress and state government, you also got to leave the door open for common people. And the reason I want her to be president is not just that she's the best qualified person by a country, though she is. Not just that I think it would be a good idea to have the first woman president, though I do. The real reason I want you to vote for her is she's the best change maker I ever met. And ever since she moved to Washington, D.C., every single solitary good thing she did, she managed to get Republican support for. Her, and we got to right We got made on health care. She and Senator Kennedy went to work on something called the Children's Health Insurance Program. It's a big part of the current health care law. More than 8 million kids have insurance on them. That passed with 75% of that Congress because we put it in the balanced budget bill. Then she did something that I found unbelievable. The guy in the Congress, in Newt Gingrich's pre Tea Party, Tea Party Congress, who liked who disliked me the most was the House Republican leader Tom DeLay. He was their enforcer, you know, everybody was scared of me. Not helping. She went to see him and said, Congressman, I know we don't agree on much. He said, Hillary, do we agree on anything? She said, Yeah, you like her kids, don't you? He said, Come on, what's that got to do with it? He said, Your children, she said, your children and I honor you for adopting them and loving them. But people are afraid to adopt children after infancy. And they're afraid to adopt children with special needs, afraid they'll fail. So what happens? We've got the foster care roles exploding in America. And all these kids are gonna age out of foster care at 18. They'll have no place to live. They'll have no access to education. They won't be able to get a job. It's going to be a disaster, and it's not their fault. Help me write a bill to fix it. So they okay. wrote this bill. Among other things, had a big tax incentive if you adopted a child after infancy. Then it got bigger if you adopted a child with special needs. Here's what happened. I signed a bill by the time I left the White House. Adoptions out of foster care had increased by 80%. 80%. Well, she always makes up a good end. So, she goes to the Senate, she's the Senator from New York, the first Senator ever on the Armed Services Committee, 9-11 happens. She goes to the President and says, we need $20 million. And a lot of Republican congressmen didn't want to do it. She said, we need it for the people, not just the buildings. We're hurting, and we're going to have people sick a long time who work down there trying to save lives. President Bush came his word and he kept it. And she became the de facto economic development officer outside New York City because until Governor Cuomo took office, our previous governors weren't interested in that. So when she ran for re election as a senator, the head of the Farm Bureau of Long Island endorsed her. And they're all small farmers, they do fruits and vegetables and other things. And, uh, the press said, I thought you were a Republican. The guy said, I am. He said, well, how can you be for her? He said, you know, a lot of politicians talk. She is the only person who has ever actually done anything to help the farmers in this country. And I'm for her. She worked with John McCain to make sure these people coming home from Iraq and Afghanistan 
with traumatic brain injury or post-traumatic stress syndrome were cared for as well as they could. She worked with Lindsey Graham to make sure that people who fought in the National Guard and Reserves when they came home got the same health care regular veterans got. She was always making something good happen with people you wouldn't think she could get to work with. Then she became Secretary of State and she negotiates these Iran sanctions and get the Chinese and the Russians to join. I didn't think she could do that. And even the Republicans would go off the deal like the sanctions. She made a deal with the President Putin's Russia that reduces the risk of accidental or intentional nuclear war. To get it passed, she had to get 67 votes in the Senate. It's a lot of Republicans. She got them. I could go through example after example after example. And she did it while telling people the truth, which is that if you want to keep America safe, do we need a strong military? Yes. But no more land wars in the Middle East. Send in the special forces to help people who are willing to fight and die for their own future and their own kids' future, which is what we're trying to do in ISIS land. We need a strong diplomacy, and she's shown that. But we also got to recognize we're living in a world where we can't kill, tell, or occupy. Everybody might be against us. And no matter how many walls you build around America, they can't wall out the social media. And we are fighting this battle for the future inside the brains of more than a billion people. So she has been the most outspoken person in saying it is nuts to demonize our fellow Americans who are Muslims because of their faith. We need them to help us be the terrorists. Thank you. 